This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Coming up on Game On. The year, 2531. The place, Planet Reach. Intergalactic battles take place between Government and UNSC forces to gain ground. Plus, it's really fun! So Halo Wars basically takes place about 20 years before the popular game Halo Combat Evolved. This game actually, it, it's a whole different addition to the Halo series. Because there's Halo, and then Halo 2, and Halo 3. And, and he, even, Halo is typically, traditionally, like a first-person shooter game. Right. Even Halo ODST, which is a, a new, the newest edition, was completely a first-person shooter game. Uh, I mean, there were additions, there were more vehicles, different things, but all first-person shooter. Um, Halo Wars is kind of like StarCraft and Warcraft where you control forces, so... Real-time strategy game, I think they call yeah, it. Yeah, and RTS is the basic genre. But what's interesting about Halo Wars is that real-time strategy games have never been really big on consoles. Um, just because you, on the PC versions you have keyboard shortcuts, and you hit this key to attack here, and you know, you have a whole range of options. And you get an entire keyboard right, to play with. You, yeah. know, you click here, right click here, and uh, getting that down into you know, a controller with you know, less than a dozen buttons is kind of hard. So they kind of had to reinvent the real-time strategy game for Halo Wars. Basically, it takes place before the first game, where the combat between the Covenant, which are the aliens, and UNSC, which are the humans, uh, is kind of rising. So. Uh, clashing in different areas. Um, part of it takes place on Halo Reach, um, which is one of the planets. But it incorporates a lot of the same vehicles, the same unit types. Um, so, you know, like infantry and the Marines and things like that. And, uh, you know, the basic idea is all based on Halo. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the game here. Let's do it. So even though uh, most of the Halo games, or all of the Halo games, are M for Mature, this one is only T for Teen. Um, mainly that's because it's not a real gory game. Part of the interesting controls is you are basically, you have a bird's eye view of um, your units. Pretty typical for most uh, RTS games. Right. Uh, what's not so typical is that the selection method, because you don't have a mouse, it's kind of a paintbrush effect. So you kind of highlight over what units you want to select, and then you have control of them. Okay. Uh, and then X is to move your units and attack. Um, y is your special attack, which for these guys, they shoot these canisters, Ooh, nice. which are very effective. Um, also along the way, obviously you have certain objectives. For this one is to get way over here and save these guys. Okay. Um, but you also have side objectives. So side objective is uh, popped up a couple seconds ago is to kill a certain number of hunters, which are these giant guys sitting here. Okay. Uh, so just a little bit about the interface. We have... Looks like kind of a mini map up right. here. And you can't see into areas where you haven't explored. Um, I noticed that as you were driving through, it was kind of like you had headlights. It's like lighting right. up areas. So I can go. see around in this area. However, you know, behind me, I have this kind of... I've been there, so it's a little bit lighted. Mm -hmm. But if there were people there, I wouldn't be able to see them. Right. Um, but up here, I have units so I can see up here. Other than that, you know, your, your interface, you can tell what units I have selected down here. Okay. So I've got two Grizzly tanks selected, and it tells me that Y is uh, the button I would hit for their special ability, okay. which were those canisters. And what are these numbers up here? Okay, so up here we have um, your resources, uh, which are the little cubes. Above that is energy, and above that are, is your pop population. Um, in this particular level, that doesn't really come into account because I can't create buildings or create uh, units. Energies, uh, energy and supplies come into effect when you have a base. Right, exactly. Okay. When you can create more units, create more tanks, they take up part of the population and they require supplies. Right, so at this point you just you're, you work with what you've got, but at other points you can actually create units. Right, later on we'll check out uh, when I have a base. And graphics wise, I mean even though you're you're, you're zoomed out quite a ways. You can't really see all that much detail. Mm -hmm. 
very nice graphics, explosions and uh, yeah, blasts and things like pretty that. Pretty impressive. Um, the cutscenes have incredible graphics. Yeah, um, it's like a movie almost. Um, and then from the cutscene, it kind of morphs into the game graphics. Right. Um, part of what I thought was interesting is you can change your uh, perspective. So I can move Ooh. around. That's cool. Fit, you know, kind of better suits. And notice the whole map turns with me in the corner. Oh, yeah. Um, in addition, I can change what angle I'm at. Oh, wow. So I can get way up close and personal. So it's kind of got a little bit of a blend of, it's RTS, but it has a certain amount of, like, third-person third shooter style camera movements. Right, so you know, I can move around and you know, see my units up close, see the explosions. So how do the controls for, for an R RTS game, how, mm -hmm. did, how, how, how good a job did they do porting it over to the console? Um, I think they did a very good job. I, you know, from coming from StarCraft and games like that, I'm very well, I'm very used to, um, it, it blended very easily for me. Um, basically, you have one control stick that moves around, mm -hmm. and another control stick which uh, changes your angle. Another nice feature is you, with the left and right buttons, you can select either all units, which is everyone on the map, mm -hmm. or you can select local units, which is everyone in your screen. Okay. And how about the actual gameplay? Is it an easy game to play, or is it difficult? Uh, it's pretty quick to pick up. Uh, they do have tutorials in the beginning. They have a, a, a basic and advanced tutorial. Good. Um, you don't have to do those. You can jump right in. I went ahead and did them just because it's really helpful to know. Yeah. Um, they show you how to use the special effects with the Y button. Uh, for instance, the infantry, they can throw grenades with the Y button. Mm. Um, and for instance, there's little challenges. So like here, you'll notice the timer on the screen. I have to sit here for a minute while he hacks into the console, and I have to protect him. Right. So waves of enemies will start coming out at me, and I have to make sure I have my units set up so that they're able to protect them. Right. And so this is the base. Basically, you have uh, preset spots where you can build things. Okay. So for instance, over here, I'm going to, if you select it, it'll tell you what you can build. Okay, so those are all empty chunks. Right, so I can build the barracks, uh, vehicle depot, field armory, reactor, and supply pad. Supply pad gives you resources. The reactor uh, gives you, I'm sorry, it's not called your energy up here, it's called your tech level. I can't okay. remember exactly what that was called. Right. It's the little lightning bolt. Um, and certain buildings require you to have a certain tech level mm -hmm. or, or a certain amount of resources. Right, and that's why you would want to have a supply pad. It creates resources so you can build other things. Exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and make three supply pads. Supplies are very good to have. Mm -hmm. um, and then I already have... Oh, that's cool. They just rise out of the ground. Yeah, it, it slowly brings them up. It can only do one at a time, but um, that's pretty neat to have. Um, I already have a vehicle depot over here, so I'm going to build a field armory over here. And you'll notice uh, if I select the vehicle depot, I can create either a scorpion tank, a cobra, which is an anti-vehicle vehicle, okay. uh, or a wolverine, which is an anti-air vehicle. Okay. Uh, depending on the level, there's different vehicles, different upgrades available. Um, for instance, in this level, I can't build any aircraft. But in certain levels, you can build fighter jets and these giant ships that go and take things out. Oh, cool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start building warthogs here. So if you notice, that little green progress bar tells me how far along one Warhog is. Okay. And then the next one, it'll do the same thing. I love how they like, you know, they're like flying in with more supplies. It's, yeah. It's very cool. It's not just like, oh, Warthog, and then just appears after right. a certain amount of time. So these supply pads constantly bring in supplies, and you can actually upgrade them to bring in more supplies. But of course, upgrading them requires more tech level. Right. It requires and more tech level and more, more supplies. supplies. <laughs> There are multiple modes to this game. Okay. Um, you have campaign mode, which is you know set levels you go through and you complete them. Um, there's skirmish mode, which is you versus AI. There is multiplayer mode, which you can do either um, over Xbox Live or on a network if you have multiple Xboxes. I mean, you're, your friend and you can play. Right. Um, yeah, there is Xbox Live, so you can play against multiple opponents. Um, and then there's also um, co-op mode. 
oh, which cool. you can play the campaign together with somebody else on another Xbox. That's cool. And lastly, there's the theater mode, which you can go and review your games. Uh, the theater mode was really popular in Halo 3, um, where you could go back and watch your games and watch that you know, incredible shot that took out three guys or something. <laughs> well, this makes me want an Xbox. <laughs> I know. Unfortunately, because it's a Halo game, only available on the Xbox. Well, that's it for this episode of Game On. Until next time, be sure to visit our website, www.harwoodpodcast.com. We'll have all of our previous episodes up there, as well as links to where you can uh, check out Halo Wars for yourself if you want to. And also, if you have any questions or comments for us about the show, send me an email at cameron at harwoodpodcast.com. So, until next time, Game, game On. on.